Hello friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you for tuning in. Today I want to talk with you about the, the sumps, the sump filtration that's on the two, the two tanks you see here behind me. Uh, in this case, a 210 gallon with South and Central Americans uh, cichlids, and in this case, uh, African cichlids in a 300 gallon tank. Uh, both of the tanks are uh, from, from my friends here in Dixon, Tennessee, uh, glass cages, and the fish are 99% from the cichlid shack in, uh, over in Tempe, Arizona. So several months ago, I, uh, I, I got this tank going, about three months ago. This one's been running now for, for quite a while, over six months at least. And I thought it was time to give you a follow-up on that DIY sump. Both of them have a sump and canister filter combination on them. And in this case, on the case of the, of the 300, there's a Fluval FX6 running in conjunction with, uh, with the sump. And in, in the case of the 210 gallon, you have a, a, a Sunsun 704B running along with the sump. Otherwise, uh, the sumps are moving over 2,000 uh, gallons per hour. Uh, the 300 gallon has two Shisei 5.0 uh, synchrosilent uh, pumps and and the uh, the the 200 gallon has one uh, she say 9.0 advance on it. Uh, the pumps are flawless. They run completely quiet, uh, and I've had no problems whatsoever with them. So the pumps are not an issue. What's very different about these tanks is the setup of the sump. It's very very um, un untraditional in its setup and I want to go ahead and share with you how that setup is working for me. So let's get right into it. So first off, let's, uh, let's look at what, really what a filter, what, what you want to see in a filter. And, and what you want, uh, of course, first and foremost is, is uh, water water clarity you want to have a tank that's that looks clean right that the water is being filtered and that particles and junk is being taken out of the water by the filter uh, next if you're uh, if you're loading up your filters with a lot of bio media you're you're uh, really looking for a very stable situation with zero ammonia zero nitrite and uh, you know a, a uh, an amount of nitrate that is not necessarily outrageous. So uh, uh, just looking at those parameters, looking at those, those benchmarks, um, let, let's, let's take a, a, a look here at, at, the, at the sump. Let's, let's first just take an actual look at the physical sump, how they're set up from the overflow box uh, down into, into the sump itself. Let's go ahead and take a look. We'll start by taking a look at the back of the 300 and you'll see here, this is called a Synergy overflow box. And it has a uh, primary drain, set up sort of like a, with a Durso, you know, with a drilled, you've got a drilled hole and then a curved top. So you have a, you have a, a primary, then you have a secondary, which is a little bit higher. And then you have an emergency overflow, a third uh, pipe, which is an emergency overflow. This makes it almost impossible for uh, for the box to actually become clogged, which would be a bigger issue if you had a saltwater tank, let's say, and you had starfish and you know sea anemones, things like that, moving around, who could potentially block, who could actually block the drain. You can see the dip, the height here. This is the height of the uh, of the primary, secondary, and then almost to the top here, you have the overflow valve, the uh, emergency overflow. Now. You can hear the water cascading into it, but once the lid goes on, it goes totally silent. Relatively silent, right? Very, very quiet. One thing I love about them. These are called unions, which allows you to uh, disconnect the piping and uh, reconnect it very easily with these things called unions highly recommended that you use a lot of unions when you do plumbing. And this right here is a gate valve. And that gate valve is controlling the water level in the overflow box and also the, uh, 
you know, really you, you, you adjust that and that controls the uh, how much water and how fast it's flowing down the primary. And that's how you really tune the system is by using that gate valve. You don't want to use a ball valve. Ball valves are not that reliable. They tend to fail more easily. You want a good quality gate valve. That's what that is, it's a gate valve. It operates differently. So the water goes down these one and a half inch pipes. These one and a half inch pipes go down into the sump, which I'll show you in a second. And then the, the, uh, the two Shisei 5.0 Synchro pumps return the water back to the tank through this braided vinyl hosing that you see here. This braid, braided hosing then goes into a hard plumbing and then here you have a one-way valve, so in the event that uh, you turn the pumps off, this flap shuts down so water doesn't siphon back into the sump. And then right here, the water goes back into the tank, returning to the tank through a flexible hosing. You see it right there. You can direct it any way you want. So it's a mirror image on the other side. So let's go underneath the tank so you can see the sump. So the primary and the secondary dump into a seven inch, a seven inch wide sock. You can see there that sock. There's no better pre-filter than a sock. And that catches any waste, any detritus that might have gone into, into the filter. There's a bag of crushed coral down here for buffering. And then you have these three tall and wide sponges I picked up from, uh, from Swiss Tropicals. They're four inches wide. I believe they're 12 inches tall. This is a 40 gallon, this is a 40 gallon breeder tank. And the water level usually runs, this is about as low as it runs. Usually it runs right around at the, at the bottom of that blue tape right there. It takes about a week before the uh, sock becomes clogged up and then I have to replace it with one of these here. And then once every two weeks or so, I'll run the socks through a laundry cycle with a little bit of bleach and a double rinse so there's no bleach residue. This is where the water gets returned to the tank. And here are the two Shisei 5.0 Synchro pumps along with a, uh, a Hyger, I believe that's a 900 watt titanium heater. So you've got the heater and it's doing a really good job. Keeps the tank at about 80. And there's also a mountain of uh, of Sarah Ciporax. Sarah Ciporax Media. If you can see it back there. But there's just a mountain of it behind that, that black that little black border there. So the water travels through the sponges through that Ciporax and then over to the pumps and then back to the tank. When you put the, uh, the doors back on the stand and the cover on the, on the overflow box, the Synergy V2 overflow box, it becomes very, very quiet. And what kind of job is it doing? I mean, you can, you can see for yourself. You can see the color of the fish, the quality of the water. Whatever you see floating around is probably just some micro bubbles from uh, the return lines breaking up the surface. I like to break up the surface, give the fish a lot of oxygen. You can see there a lot of surface agitation. The fish are growing like crazy. They're showing great color. And my nitrates are usually around the 20 to 40 range max and I'm not doing giant water changes. My water changes on this tank are around, uh, I would say at the most about 30%. Now that is also being assisted by the FX6. You can see the pre-filter on the FX6 back there. I've done some videos on that pre-filter. It lets me run that FX6 for about nine months between servicing. So it really helps a lot on not having to work too hard to keep this running the way it should and, and looking great. 
So that sump is certainly different from something you might buy that has uh, a lot of uh, walls and you know baffles in it. Basically, it's just water dumping into a tank, traveling through sponges, traveling over media, and then being returned to the to the to the aquarium. The simplest design imaginable. It's basically a a big hang on back that's under the aquarium. I love sums because they add water volume and they're extremely easy to work on. You just reach in, grab what you need to work on, drop in whatever you want to drop in, pull out whatever you want to pull out. It's a very simple, simple process. This tank is seven feet across. Let's take a quick look at the 210, which is very similar in the setup. This was my first ever hang on back setup. Fortunately, it was pretty simple. You just gotta really make sure you've got this thing level. And again, you have the uh, primary, the primary, the secondary, and the emergency overflow. And again, it's pretty quiet, but when I put the lid on, it'll be almost entirely silent. And again, we're running into one and a half inch pipes, a gate valve, the gate valve that controls the, uh, the flow of the primary, your secondary, and then your, your overflow, or rather your emergency uh, third pipe, which again is a bit of an overkill. Since this is a freshwater tank, the probability of my sump getting blocked is, is next to zero. In, in the case of this tank, there's only one pump returning water to the tank, and that is a, uh, again, a Shise, Shise 9.0, and it's going through just plain clear hosing. This is the uh, one-way valve on it, and then you have clear hosing returning to the tank with, a, with a, just a, a regular, just a regular bracket. And that just has sort of a blade output that you can see here. I don't know if you can see it's behind the giant piece of driftwood, but there's an output back there and pointed slightly to the surface, again, breaking up a lot of, a lot of surface tension. In this setup, you have the uh, primary and secondary dumping into four inch white socks that are 14 inches long. Again, the perfect pre-filter. They're dumping into a 29 gallon tank. And in this case, I have one, one sponge from um, Swiss Tropicals, four inches wide, and I believe also about, um, about 12 inches, maybe 14 inches tall. And a couple hard, hard sponge material that I picked up from Bulk Reef Supply. And then there's some uh, pinky floss in the very front of it. So you've got some pinky floss, and then it goes over the filters. And then you've got, in this case, I did put some baffles in, which I didn't do on the, on the second one because I, I just wanted to keep it even more simple. But you've got a, a, a baffle here where water can flows down and then through the bottom. I've got some media in there, some filter media in case I want to start up a tank real quick. And uh, there's also a heater down there, another one of those Higer titaniums. And so you've got this overflow going on and then it dumps finally into the final chamber. And that's where I've got that Shisei pump pumping the water back, back to the tank. Here's some spare, some spare socks. So always have some socks around in case I need them. So you can see what's going on in there a little better. So I put some baffles, I actually, um, Silicone in some baffles in this tank, but really in hindsight, I wish I'd done this one the same way just with sponges because the sponges are stiff stiff enough They, they sort of are they're sort of self ba baffling <laughs> such su Such a term, but uh, again the water level stays right around here Now if the sponges ever become blocked You'll know because you'll have a uh, water level. That's a lot higher on one side than on the other side so if this sponge were to become really, really clogged up, I'd probably have this water level up here. 
and then on the other side of the sponge the water level would be down here and that would tell me okay it's time to give that sponge a real good rinse but if I don't see that I'm not gonna mess with that sponge so that can go for nine months a year without being messed with and of course the ultimate uh, the ultimate test is how is the tank doing and so water quality is excellent test results are rock solid the fish are doing really really well growing like crazy showing great color and water tests are always right right on the money with zero ammonia zero nit nit nitrite and nitrates roughly at around roughly around 20 on this tank this tank is a bit more established a bit more seasoned if you will and in this tank I have a uh, a wave maker which happens to be running right now it always runs and kicks up detritus when I'm filming so it, it can tell I'm gonna film and, uh, and so <laughs> that little fire mouth down there So that uh, wave maker kicks up the detritus, which then goes into the overflow box and down into the sump. And of course, I also have that Sun Sun 704B. You can see the pre-filter for it in the back there. But overall, I would say that these uh, DIY sumps have been a success. It certainly saved me probably three to $400 per, per sump. And admittedly, I'm using smaller sumps than most would use, but again, that's all part of the, uh, just sort of part of the DIY, uh, keep it simple setup, using a 40 gallon breeder on a 300, backed up by a canister, and using a 29 gallon on a 210, again, backed up by a canister. So there you have it. My two uh, DIY uh, sumps are working perfectly. Big shout out to uh, She Safe for those pumps. They gave me a great deal on them and they're working beautifully, completely quiet and flawless. Also a big shout out to uh, Glass Cages uh, for the, uh, the, the great, great deal on the tanks. And of course, to my channel sponsor, the uh, Cichlid Shack for uh, all the help with the fish. And uh, you can see they're just phenomenal fish, every one of them. So uh, thank you to, to those folks and also thank you to you who watch my videos and support the channel. If you like the content, be sure to subscribe. We're, we're creeping up on 50,000 and hit that bell and that thumbs up and uh, you know, tell YouTube something good is going on around here. And if you wanna support the channel further and the projects here in the, uh, in the garage, join the garage gang and uh, become a Patreon monthly supporter. Starts for as little as $3 a month. Details are in the description. Thank you, my friends. You are very appreciated. And I hope to see you on Saturday for the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. That's at 11 a.m. Central. We get into filtration and tanks and fish and food and everything in between. I hope to see you there. Saturdays, 11 a.m. Central. And that's noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. That's Cichlids and Coffee. Thank you, my friends. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.